Hello and welcome to our lecture on self-ionization of water and calculating concentration and pH. <clears throat> the first thing I want to talk about uh, in this section of acid-base discussions is self-ionization of water. In any sample of water, water molecules ionize to a very small degree. In other words, a very small uh, amount of them ionize spontaneously, losing a hydrogen ion to a neighboring water molecule. Remember, the oxygen part of water molecules is very, very negatively charged, very polar. Uh, negative. The hydrogen pieces are positively charged. The positively charged hydrogen that escapes from an ionized water then go attaches to a water. This thing is going to turn into these two things. This hydrogen ion latches on. Your products become H3O plus. I'll just write that here. H3O plus and OH minus. And these are conjugate acid base pair. Okay, so your bronsted lowry acid is your thing donating your hydrogen ion. Your base accepted it. Your bronsted lowry base, after it's accepted the hydrogen, becomes your conjugate acid because it's now in possession of that hydrogen. And the conjugate base is what remains of your bronsted lowry acid after it's lost its hydrogen. Now, as I said, this happens very rarely in a water solution, but roughly one out of every two million molecules of water. It's called self ionization. Um, and because that's there, we can evaluate it and use it as a benchmark, and we'll talk about that in a second. Other molecules like ammonia do the same thing in pure solution. Now, uh, ammonia happens to be a gas at room temperature, but it can self-ionize, donating a hydrogen ion to a neighbor, leaving behind a conjugate base of H2-, creating a conjugate acid. Okay, so this isn't something that's exclusive to water. Um, when water ionizes, the hydrogen and uh, hydroxide are in equal concentration at this value at room temperature. And because of that, um, we can kind of understand that if we make an acid solution, we're going to have extra hydrogen ions in the solution. And if you pump a bunch of hydrogen ions in, some of them will react with hydroxide to make water, and you'll have mostly hydrogen ions in the solution, therefore an acid. The thing is, these things act in inverse relationships. So as one goes up, the other must go down. And the cool thing is, is if we if we multiply the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, we get a constant value, and that's called Kw. Now, um, in pure water, Kw, or, or sorry, the uh, the hydrogen ion and hydroxide concentration are equal because they came from the same water molecule. So you're gonna have exactly the same amount of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion concentra concentration. So that value will be one times ten to the negative fourteenth. But as you manipulate hydrogen ion concentration, you increase that, this decreases, your product is still this value. So, we can use Kw, the ion product constant for water, in calculations where we need to determine hydrogen ion or hydroxide ion, knowing the other. This equation at 25 degrees Celsius will always equal this value. And they will, water will always ionize to this, this concentration at that temperature. So using that, how can we use this equation we just created? Kw is equal to hydrogen ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration. Remember, Kw is always equal to 1 times 10 negative 14 at uh, 25 Celsius, and we won't ever change that in pre-APCHEM. APCHEM, gloves come off, but in here, we'll keep that steady. If you can manipulate this equation to calculate um, one or the other if you know one. So if you know hydrogen ion concentration, sorry, if you know hydroxide concentration, you can get hydrogen concentration. So let's look at that. If we have a hydroxide ion concentration of 2.5, 10, negative 5, calculate hydrogen ion concentration. You simply take the ion product constant for water, 1 times 10, negative 14, divided by this known hydroxide concentration to get hydrogen ion concentration. So let's do that. And as I do that, pay attention to the buttons I press. 1 double E, negative 14, divided by 2.5, double E, negative 5. And we'll get into the calculations of all this stuff in a bit, but... Um, we get 4.3 times, or 4, 4 times 10 to the negative 10th, and there's the operation with the solution. We get two sig figs, because our given came with two sig figs in the coefficient. We can just infer that zero there. And the same thing, if you have hydrogen, if you have a hydrogen ion concentration of this, what's hydroxide? You plug into the formula. Again, it's the same operation. 1 times 10 negative 14 divided by the value you're seeking, or sorry, divided by the value you know to get the value you're seeking, and there you go. To use exponents in the calculator, please use double E. Do not use times 10 or 10 to the power of or caret or anything like that. This preserves order of operations should we have a multi-step operation in the calculator all at once. 
if we use times 10 or caret, the calculator won't know when we're beginning and ending a value, and therefore we could destroy order of operations. Always, always use double E. So, um, in an acid, hydrogen ion concentration is greater than hydroxide. So, we can expect our, hyd our hydrogen ion concentration is somewhere between 1 times 10 to the 0, which is a large number, and 1 times 10 negative 7, which is just above uh, neutral. In hydroxide, the opposite is true. The hydrogen ion concentration uh, is going to be much less. Your hydroxide ion concentration is going to be great. So we can qualitatively say, is it, hey, is, this, is a solution with this concentration of hydrogen, of hydrogen or hydronium going to be acidic or basic? Well, if you're looking at hydrogen ion concentration, that value between 0 and 7, you can expect it's probably acidic. If that value is uh, greater than 7, 11 in this case, you can expect it's basic. Switching the script, if you look at hydroxide ion concentration, and that value is between 0 and 7, you can expect your substance to be basic. Now, if you need to, what you could do immediately is you could drop this into the ion constant for water and find that in this example, we would have, this again would be using the skill we learned on the previous slide, would be 1 times 10 negative 10, which you should recognize because we're talking about hydronium concentration, uh, greater than 7 here, and for the exponent, we can see that that would be basic. So this is just qualitatively looking at a value for concentration and deciding, hey, does this look like it's going to be basic or acidic? And we can look at the predominating um, species if it's hydroxide and it's one to seven or zero to seven, we expect basic. If it's hydrogen and it's zero to seven, it's acidic. So you might say, well, then what's happening with hydro hydroxide ion concentration if your hydro hydronium is one times ten negative three? Well, you can simply say one doubly negative fourteen divided by your hydronium concentration, 1 double E negative 3, and you get 1 times 10 uh, to the negative 11 is equal to your hydronium concentration. So you can see that you have a very small hydronium concentration when you're, when you're, I'm uh, oh, sorry, this should say hydroxide, I apologize. You have a really small hydroxide ion concentration when you have a relatively large hydronium concentration because they are inverse re inversely related. As this went up, this must have gone down. So it's neato looking at exponents to determine acid base, but the real conventional way is pH, which we know you're accustomed to. So let's talk about that. Um, this is a gross oversimplification, but it emphasizes the point that these two things are inversely related. You have a pool of ion possibilities, and you can overwhelm the system by taking out hydroxide in favor of hydrogen or the, alternate, uh, the alternative. When the system is predominating in hydrogen ions, you have an acid. A pH of 0 means you have virtually all hydrogen ions. A pH of uh, 12, 13, 14 means you have almost all base uh, hydroxide ions. And pH of 7 is neutral. We call a basic system alkaline sometimes. Acidic really doesn't have a different name. But a pH of 0 up to 7 is considered acidic. And greater than 7 up to 14 is basic. And keep in mind, these numbers are sort of those exponent values we were just looking at. 10 to the 0, 10 to the negative 14. Okay, so we can do this and we call that pH. It's actually a logarithm, logarithmic value that reflects the exponent we were looking at. I just explained these values, 0 to 14 is the range, pH is 0 to 7 acid, 7 to 14 basic. We use log in the calculator to turn a concentration with a teeny tiny exponent into a number we can work with between 0 and 14. It's a base 10 logarithm, um, and it just makes our life a little easier. Here's a graphic illustrating that reciproc reciprocal relationship. Here we have seven and or six and five and five. Here we have eight and two. Here we have two and eight. A logarithm is a power to which 10 must be raised to create a certain number. In this case, power is pH or pOH. Um, log base 10, 10 to the power of a substance, a number is that number. Now, if negative 14 is our number, then obviously we'd get a negative value. Um, so pH is a negative log, because we, we want to work in a scale that's a, a positive value. So we do the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions to get pH. Okay, so let's press this into the calculator. Um, negative, I use the negative button, not minus, the negative button, log. I'm skipping. If you've seen your calculator, you're at the base now. If you type now, you're going to be putting base in. You want to put the value in. If you leave this blank, it assumes base 10. So we'll just skip right past that into this field, and we'll type in 1 double E negative 8, and we should get a pH of 8. 
So you saw what I've been doing in the calculator so far. We're focused in on this log key, uh, this 10 to the x key, and the log key that's behind it. Here, we use the negative button. We don't use minus. If you're in a TI calculator, or sorry, if you're in an iPhone calculator, you have these buttons here that do the same thing. You also have an exponent key. Should get you most of what you need in a pinch. Sig figs and pH. This is very straightforward, but it's different than what we're used to, so please pay attention. Whatever your concentration value is in terms of molarity, the coefficient that's out in front, the sig figs you have here, are how many sig figs will be after the whole number in your pH. So if our hydrogen on concentration is 3.09, we will have a pH with a number, point, with three digits after it. Okay, so if we do the negative log of this value, we'll say negative log 3.09, that was three sig figs, doubly negative 10. We're going to, oops, see, look what I did. I typed right into the field where my my uh, base goes. Let's see if I'll just hit enter and do a syntax error and move on. Well, oh, we're stuck. Oh, there we go. Negative log. We will skip past that field and do 3.09 doubly negative 10. And we get 9.51 for uh, 9.51 for our value. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, we got to have three sig figs because our digit here had three sig figs here. Three sig figs should come after our whole number. So we get 9.510. Sample question. If pH is, uh, uh, find pH if the hydrogen ion or hydronium ion concentration is this value. So since I've got a concentration, I do negative log. Five, doubly negative six. I'll apply sig figs later. I did it again. So negative log. 5 doubly negative 6, did it again, this is fun, 5 doubly negative 6, and you get 5.3013, since there were two digits here, I can carry two digits after my whole number, 5.30 would be the pH value. The pOH scale is the yang to the yin of pH, um, keep in mind, 0 to 14 is your range, so if your pH is 9, your pOH must be 5. Um, pOH also ranges from 0 to 14, for some reason that's not popping up, varies inversely with pH. A pOH 0 to 7 is basic, 7 still neutral, 7 to 14 would be acidic. pH plus pOH always equals 14 at 25 degrees Celsius, okay, always. And it's a function of going back and remembering that the ion product constant for water is based on hydrogen and hydronium being times 10 to the negative 14. These two things are related in terms of that exponent piece. So if pH is 6, 14 minus 6 is 8, 14 minus 4 is 10. Now if I have pOH is 3, then pH would be 11. pOH is 11, pH must be 3. So calculating hydroxide and hydronium ion concentration from pH is as simple as this little keystroke here, 10 to the negative pH. That would be this here. So if our pH is 9.510, and the same is true for hydroxide ion concentration too, we'll simply press 10 to the x, negative 9.510. And there we have our concentration of 3.09 times 10, negative 10. When you have three digits after your whole number in your pH or pOH, that's how many digits will be in your concentration value, and that's a molarity you're getting, okay? So that, that ends the, the first video for acid-base calculations and examination of self-ionization of water. The second video that follows this is shorter. It's simply these calculations done to practice. Okay, so um, view that one next. I hope you've taken great notes. We'll look for you in class to ask questions based on the notes you take and so we can progress further in this idea.